Hello STEM teachers. Today I wanted to talk to you about one of the first lessons that I do um, as group work with my kindergarten students. We've been doing STEM at our school for a couple years now and a lot of my older students are really good at teamwork but in kindergarten this is something that we still have to teach kids and um, one of the emphasis of my program, my STEM program, is the four C's or the 21st century skills which is communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. And one of the first ways that I introduce that is at the beginning of the year, probably about the end of October, beginning of November, I introduce this activity with students. Before that, we've talked about the classroom and what free choice looks like and how we care for the materials. And we do a couple individual challenges first. Then this is our first group challenge. And what I do is I give each kid a shoebox bin sorry, each pair of kids, a shoebox bin full of Keviplanks. And I tell them that their challenge is to build the tallest tower possible using the planks in the box. Now I don't tell them how they need to use them. And what I have seen time and time again, I have six kindergarten classes and almost every single group and every single class does the exact same thing. They take their bin of materials, they sit together side by side, and they build separately because at the beginning of kindergarten, we're not used to working as teams and we're not used to collaborating and communicating with one another and brainstorming different ideas. So what I see happening side by side is one person builds theirs, the other person builds theirs. They do not split the box of materials evenly ahead of time. They don't say, this is your half, this is my half. It's whoever can build the fastest gets the most. And it almost always ends with a little bit of frustration because the kids say, I didn't build very tall and I ran out of blocks. Can I have more. And I say, no, this is this is what we talk about when we have constraints. There's a limit to how many materials I'm going to give you. So you've got to figure out how to build this using just these materials. Now a couple groups will figure it out and they'll build together and build taller. But that is really, really the rare exception. Later in the year, when you give them the same challenge, it's really interesting to see that what they're going to do is they're going to combine their materials. They're going to be more in that planning stage of the engineering design process because they're going to be thinking ahead of time, okay, we only have one bin of materials, there's two of us, the goal is to build the tallest thing possible. How do we do that? Well, we're going to have to work together with this one bin of materials. And before we start building, we need to talk about, are we going to build like this? Or are we going to build like this? And which one is going to be better? Which one's going to be worse? Can we compromise between these two things? So from beginning of year kindergarten to mid-year kindergarten, you're going to see huge growth if you're doing this every week in what students are capable of doing and how they're able to work. And this is the emphasis of my K-2 curriculum. Um, at, K at the K-2 level, we're not looking at strongly as strongly at um, are they following the engineering design process? I'm looking at, are they following the 21st century skills that they're going to need? And those are the skills of communication and collaboration and creativity and critical thinking. More towards third, fourth, and fifth grade, we really start addressing the concepts um, of hitting all the aspects of the engineering design process. But when we're just starting out in kindergarten, this is where we start out. Can you start working with a partner? Can you share with a partner? Can you communicate with a partner? Can you do a little bit of brainstorming? Can you come up with a plan together? Beginning of year kindergarten, not so much. End of year kindergarten, almost certainly they'll have this skill down. Another thing I notice is kindergartners have a slightly different approach to building tall. So one way they do it with Kevin planks is to lay their planks absolutely flat just like this, and this is how we build tall. We call, we call this kind of building a brick. So they use up a lot of material, but they don't get much height in the process of doing it. Other students will figure out, well, maybe I can build like this, and I can build a little bit taller by turning them on their sides, but I'm still using more materials than I need to per level. As the year progresses, we start to see a change in this as well. And what I also notice when I repeat this activity in February is that the students will start to talk to one another when they see the other person building in a way that isn't using materials in the smartest way possible. And they'll say, well, wait a second, instead of putting these flat, let's turn them on their side. Instead of stacking them and crunching them all in together, let's think about spreading them out and we'll get extra layers going up. And I'll sometimes even see people doing little tricks at the end to try and get something to go a little taller really quickly. Um, sometimes we'll even see kids trying to do 
structures like this. I'm not sure I can balance this right now. I think my table's not completely level, but you'll start to see some structures like this going on at the top as well. So there's definitely a huge, huge, huge amount of growth that I see happening between the beginning of year kindergarten and how we work together as teams and collaborate and communicate, and even mid-year what I'm seeing, because almost all of my groups mid-year can start to build a little bit smarter, a little bit taller, but this is a great place to start when we start talking about how to work together as a team in kindergarten in STEM. I asked my kids to demonstrate what it looks like when a team doesn't build together on a challenge. Without even asking them to do so, they argued over who got more pieces and started grabbing the final ones and also competed against each other instead of working toward a common goal. Then I asked them to repeat the challenge, only this time working with each other. Typically they would work from the same bin, but it was in the way, so I had them divide up the material before starting. They planned ahead of time, and when I told them they were off camera and could stop, they insisted on finishing. They demonstrated much better teamwork and enjoyed the task much more this time. Now you may have noticed that I keep mentioning kindergarten when I talk about this lesson plan, and that's only because I've been the STEM teacher for a few years now, and this is where I introduce teamwork for the very first time. However, this can be used at any grade level. Now, some teamwork challenge tips. First, Hold off on teamwork until after the first few classes so students can focus on classroom routines and can practice successfully a few independent challenges. Pair students up and give them one bin of materials. Give them a challenge that requires them to share the materials in order to be successful. And finally, repeat this activity mid-year and talk about how their teamwork strategies have changed since their first team challenge.